Welcome back to Questing Beast, I'm Ben, and today we're going to be looking at the Metamorphica by John Stone Metzger. This is the revised edition of the Metamorphica, so if you have the original edition, it may be worth getting the revised one, at least in PDF form. And if you don't own it already, this would be the version to get. Uh, this is a toolkit in its most pure form. Uh, it does not have any rules, it is entirely system neutral, at least as far as I can tell, and it only exists to help you generate random powers, mutations, and uh, transformations that creatures might have. So this is awesome for magical creatures in fantasy games. This is awesome for uh, if you're running post-apocalyptic games and you need a lot of mutations, it'll work for that. In fact, it has sections just dedicated to that. And it would also work for things like superheroes or any other game where you need all sorts of crazy mutations and powers uh, for your creatures. Let's take a look at what we have inside. Uh, but first, let's look at the physical construction. This is a Lulu book, so it was printed out on demand. And like most Lulu books, it is quite sturdy. It's got a nice du dust jacket here. Holds together nicely. Um, it looks slightly tilted on mine, and then it's slightly misaligned. But it's hard to tell if that's just the way that it was shipped. It seems like that way anyway. When it came in the mail, it was a little bit bent. So that's the way it goes sometimes. Let's look at what we have inside. Table of contents. All right, our mutation table. So, our mutation tables give us 1,000 different mutations. It goes all the way to here. And they are grouped into different categories. So, we have body form tables, body functions, uh, mind behaviors, mind cognition, psychic powers, supernatural attributes. So you can roll a D1000 and get a random uh, mutation if you just want you know, one of anything. Or you can go to an individual table, for example, just supernatural tables, and it'll tell you what to roll. Roll 1D300 plus 700 to get your results here, which is a little bit awkward. A lot of people aren't going to be able to roll one d300 or it might have a little bit of trouble figuring out how to do that so that is a little unfortunate but it is nice that they are grouped into different categories and are easy to find and once you actually look up the correct entry after rolling your d1000 you can look on the side here and in gray it tells you what page to look at so looking at the actual mutation descriptions here once you go to one they very frequently have subtables so this is far more than just 1000 mutations a lot of these have anywhere from four or six all the way up to 20 or even in some cases a hundred more entries in a subtable underneath them. So they have exponentially more information to use than just the D1000 table. This could be really great for prepping games. So that's the mutation tables. And then if we move along a little farther. The game also comes with some additional tables. There's some really great art in this book, by the way. Uh, it's a bit variable. Some of it's really great. Some of it's eh. But um, I appreciate the work that went into it and finding all the different art. I don't know if all of it was public domain or some of it was commissioned. I'm not sure. But I do enjoy quite a few uh, pieces. So the additional tables, they cover a whole bunch of random stuff that aren't directly related to mutations necessarily, but could be useful when coming up with mutations. For example, body parts, uh, colors, different types of animals, a huge number of tables for animals. I assume that if you want to make your creature you know, part one animal, part another, you could roll on these tables to do that. Fantastic animals, fantastic peoples, uh, more mammals. And then we have something really useful here, which is that it takes a lot of the mutations from the previous section of the book and reorganizes them by different categories. So you can just find detrimental mental mutations or detrimental physical mutations. If you just want, I want something bad that happened to their body, you can roll on here, um, because it's just not organized that way in the uh, original section back here. So that's very clever, I think. Materials, monster parts, monster powers, mutant feature tables, and so on. The next section is after the fall, which takes a look at a post-apocalyptic setting and has tables designed just to do that really well. Now, before we move on, I want to say that the quality of the uh, entries varies. 
Uh, some are very interesting and very useful. Some of them are fairly mundane and bland. And I think because the goal here is more for a completionist attitude than for an every single entry needs to be really interesting kind of attitude. And in general, what that means is this book is not so useful at the table. At least I, it wouldn't be for me. If I was in the middle of running a game and I needed some sort of mutation, it would be actually a little bit tricky to find the correct table in here, roll on it, read the description, roll on any sub tables, and then apply it to the game. And even in that, and even if I could do all of that quickly, um, it might not be um, as flavorful and interesting as I would like. So I don't think it's really good for that. What I think that this book is fantastic for is for prep, because there are so many entries and such a wide variety of stuff in here. Flipping through it and just finding the good stuff or finding just the correct table and scanning through all the entries can go a really long way, I think, towards getting the ideas that you need to set up a campaign. And I think it probably excels in that. It's probably the best toolkit I've seen for that sort of thing. If you're looking for something that just gives you good information on the go, this is probably not so much what you're looking for. Although there are some examples, uh, some counter examples, I should say. I did find some tables that have some really great flavorful stuff that you can use. But by and large, it's more like an encyclopedia, if that makes any sense. By and large, so we have post-apocalyptic mutants. These sections at the end that are more focused on specific settings might be more useful at the table just because they're more focused. You're not going to get as much random stuff. Beastlings, uh, hyper-evolved animals, mutant hordes. Lots of subtables for generating interesting mutant hordes in your post-apocalyptic landscapes. The types of heads, the types of limbs, mutant plants that you might want, plant society, post-apocalyptic mutations, huge number of these. Scavenged pieces of the world. Roll a D1000 to get random junk. This feels like the Fallout video games, right? Open up random lockers and get random stuff out of it. Especially if your post-apocalyptic game is really focusing on scrapping stuff and rebuilding things, this could actually be a lot of fun. Moving on, we have the Ficto Technica. This was one section that I found a little bit confusing. I think it's for generating sci-fi technology, um, but it's very complex. So you roll on like Genotech and then say you roll a you know 10, you need to roll on organic quality and then add a prefix plus an organic quality and then add an effect and then add a form. Then you have to go th through and roll on all of those tables, combine them, and you get a crazy word for some piece of technology, which is actually a cool idea, but it is a bit labor intensive. So as I said, better for prep than for just using at the table. Another thing this book could be very useful for is if you are making your own random tables. It's very completionist, as I said. It tries to get you know a little bit of everything, and so it's great for mining for your own ideas. If you're creating more condensed random tables that just do what you want them to do. Forms, devices, pre prefixes, etc., etc., etc. This is a great little section here, magic items. So this actually reminds me a lot of the stuff that I uh, created in Maze Rats and that I've seen in other RPGs as well, where um, you can combine things like, uh, you have tables for random armor, magical equipment, but let's see if I can find those exact tables. Here we go. Adjectives, features, and purposes, right? This looks like a lot of the stuff in Maze Rats and in other games that have randomized um, magic and randomized items and things like that. So you'd have a magnificent uh, alabaster, uh, quicksilver, it's blossoming, and what kind of thing is it? It's a mask. So you can combine several different adjectives and materials to create cool magical items. I think these tables are really good. Um, they're even larger than the ones in Maze Rats, uh, and you can create some really great magic items this way. Roll some up for fun. Last section in the book is popular science, and this mostly covers things like superheroes, right? Stuff from pop culture. Superpowers table. Now, a lot of these don't have detailed descriptions because what these tables are is are they um, they condense information from previously in the book on the mutations tables, and he just finds the ones that are more superhero oriented and puts them all on a big list here, so you can just. Uh, siphon through the descriptions earlier on and just get ones that are more flavored for the four color world. We have tables for uplifted animals, xenobiology, 
And then we have a complete setting in the back. Well, I don't know if we call it a complete setting, but it's very focused on a uh, chaos in the old world or the old fantasy Warhammer world. That's what it feels like to me. You're fighting or you're leading armies of demon hordes, and it focuses on that. And a lot of these are really flavorful. I'll show you one of my favorites here. Infernal Characteristics. This stuff is awesome. This is a great table for creating random, terrifying monsters. It is... How long is it? It's a good... Whew, it's another D1000 table, it looks like. And a lot of them are really excellent. Plus, Summoning Mishap Table. This would be great for Dungeon Crawl Classics or any role-playing game where magic can go awry. There's a lot of great ones on here that you could easily implement in your own game. So there you go. Hopefully this review was useful to you. Like I said, this is a great resource for prepping games in most genres. It's system neutral, so you can use it for any game. And with a bit of work, you can get some really excellent stuff out of it. I'm definitely going to be hanging on to mine, and I'm going to be using it for a whole bunch of different things. So I'm glad that I bought it. If you want to check out uh, where you can get it online, please look down in the description below. I will put links to it there. You can also subscribe to my channel right over here or join me on Patreon here if you'd like to support my channel. You can also uh, check the description below. I will put uh, more information on other books like this, including my own Maze Rats, which has a wide variety of random tables similar to this, but more focused and condensed down to just provide useful stuff for fantasy games. Please leave comments below if you know of any other books like this that are toolkits of random tables for helping GMs create their own campaigns. It's one of my favorite genres of role-playing game books, and I just love to see more of it. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys later.